Hey everybody, Jared Bendis here, and I make games. I teach game design, and I design games. And I do physical games, board games, card games, dice games, and I do video games, arcade games, other types of games as well. So I know both sides of the gaming world. For me, though, what's really fun, though, is building a really good physical game. I love the idea of taking all of the artificial intelligence programming type things that you would want to do in a game and encapsulating it in rules and cards and dice so that you're really playing this system that you've built physically that involves no electronics, no computers, no nothing. Now, I know how to do the electronics and computer stuff. I actually, I code and I teach coding as well. But there's nothing really fun to balance the two together. I was working on a new game recently. And as I was building the game, I was having a flashback of my childhood and one of my favorite board games. And that game actually is a hybrid of the two games. And that game is called The Dark Tower. Now, by the way, my box is a little worse for wear. I loved this game as a kid. My friend Danny owned one. I didn't own one. We also played at Danny's house. Every time I talk about Dark Tower, Danny's like, can I keep mentioning me? But he owned one and we envied him. Many years ago, I was visiting a friend of mine and he had one of these in his attic. And I'm like, when did you get this? He goes, it came with the house. You want it? It's yours. Then he found out how much it was worth. Even then, they were pretty rare. This game was from the 1980s, and there were two things that make it rare. Number one, there was a crazy lawsuit about the fact that it was stolen from the original inventors, but more importantly, they're old, and they break, and it's electronic. So this is the Dark Tower, and with the exception of my box being beat to hell and having a couple of flags broken, I have a complete Dark Tower. And what made the Dark Tower amazing is that it's a board game where the engine is really this thing called... The Dark Tower. It really is this little computer here that does all the work for you. Now, there is a lot of work that you have to do yourself. As a matter of fact, it is this enormous, enormous book to teach you how to play the game. But the game's fairly robust, and it's really, really neat, and there's a lot of procedures to make this little, little computerized thing work. Now, it's a really cool game, and let me actually turn it on, and you'll see what makes it really neat is, is that inside of this, it gives you feedback using music, and it also has little film strips and light bulbs and LED. The LEDs give you the numbers, and then the film little strips will tell you what you're looking at. And you're going to see when I turn the turn on, it's going to go through the warm-up mode to self-test. Light bulb 1, 88. Light bulb 2, 88. Light bulb 3, 88. Shows you that everything is working. Level 1, sure. Player 1. You could actually play this as a solo game. If you played it as a solo game, you could actually die, which means that the moment something bad happens, if you die, game over. If you're playing with multiple players, it's the first to win that makes it work. All right? So I'm going to go through and show you an example of like a battle sequence so you can see how the little computer does it for you. So I'm going to hit the tomb and hopefully it'll actually fight me. Fifteen brigands, ten warriors. Ooh, I'm winning. Uh-oh. I'm losing. I'm winning. Oh, I'm losing. I'm winning. I'm losing. And I better win. There we go. Now it's going to show me how much gold I have in total. Okay, that's how much gold I have. So that's how the game would work. And you, you would need to keep track of this yourself on your own scorecard. This is a Dark Tower scorecard. It uses a little red battleship pegs. And it tells you how many warriors, how much gold, and how much food. This is kind of neat because you have food. And for a certain every certain amount of warriors you have, you lose one or two or three foods every turn. I also have four special items, a scout, a beast, a sword, or a healer, which I can also have, and there's indicators for that, and then room for the first, second, and third key. And the idea being is you're gonna wander all the way around the board, collecting keys, storming up to the dark tower, putting the keys in the right order, unlocking the dark tower, defeating the dark tower, and voila, you're the winner. Now, what's really cool is if you're really bad at this and you forget to keep track of it, you can actually tell the Dark Tower to give you an inventory, but then it takes your turn. So it's kind of neat how this would sort of penalize you for not keeping track of things. Plus, if you don't keep track of how much food you have, 
it's going to warn you because every time you, you have a turn without food in your thing, you're going to lose a warrior. A lot of cool little management things that come into play here. I'm going to show you the board so you can kind of see what the board looks like. And it's really neat because you're basically wandering around. And again, your primary thing, of course, is fighting. I could have run away. If I thought I was going to lose, I could press the button and say, run away. And that'd be great. This way I can fight, live to fight another day, fight to live another day. The other thing here is I'm going to take you to the marketplace. In the marketplace, they're going to offer you things that you can buy. You can buy warriors. You can buy a scout, which will prevent you from getting lost. You can buy a beast, which will allow you to carry more gold. You can buy a healer, which will prevent you from getting the plague. You can find a sword, which will be great if a dragon attacks. You can find a wizard, which will allow you to curse one of the other players and get some of their stuff. And you can find Pegasus, which will allow you to fly once to another part of the, of the board. So all of these things, and of course you can find the keys. All of these things are there to try to get you to move around the board and eventually storm the Dark Tower. So there are four quadrants along the board. You start with your quadrant, and then you work your way counterclockwise around the board, collecting a key in each quadrant, making it back to your quadrant and working your way up to the Dark Tower to fight it. Inside of each, you're going to have things like the Sanctuary, which allows you to replenish supplies if you're really, really out. There is the Bazaar, which allows you to uh, try to shop. You can even haggle with a shopkeeper, but sometimes they get mad and they close on you. And then we have a Ruin and a Tomb, which will allow you to sort of explore and maybe fight and maybe win some treasure. Kind of cool. Also, every so often you're going to be attacked by the dragon. If you're attacked by the dragon and you have the dragon sword, you actually get everything the dragon is carrying, which, of course, is everything the dragon has stolen from everybody else, which would be a quarter of their warriors and a quarter of their gold. And then you can place a dragon anywhere on the board except for on a, on a room, which allows you to block that space from everyone. It's kind of neat. And then again, what's even neater is, is the Dark Tower itself turns so that whoever's turn it is gets to see in private what's going on, so everybody else can hear what's going on at the same time. Now, as I said, I played this as a child, and I loved this game. I loved the fact that it was a race. I loved the fact that there was a little bit of a gotcha element. I loved that you could play it solo. For me, this was a really good game, and again, it had the Dark Tower. Now, if you stumble upon one of these, your Dark Tower might be broken. Well, how are you going to play it without a Dark Tower? Well, People have been really cool over the years, and they've programmed them. So you can get a Dark Tower app for Android, which will replace the Dark Tower. You get a Dark Tower app for the iOS, which will replace the Dark Tower. Somebody wrote a Flash version, which of course is dead since Flash is dead. I found a Java version, and most recently, somebody had taken all that code and they'd put it together for the Tabletop Simulator, which is a great way to play this game. And by the way, there's even a new version of the Dark Tower where people have gone through and tried to create a new version with a new app and a new everything, and that's a whole different thing. I don't care about that. But I wanted to go back and think about the game a little bit differently. What I care about is how this game was constructed. And now that I've seen that there's code out there for it, I can sort of stand on the shoulder of giants and look at the math, look at the probabilities and say, all right, that's how the game really works. Understand the probabilities of a game does not ruin the game. There are lots of games where we understand the probabilities of the game. There's dice, there's cards, there's whatever. And we can analyze all the probabilities. And that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to take the probabilities that have been put out there and really analyze what they look like. But not only do I want to analyze what they look like, I want to ask myself, what would it have been like if in the 1980s, instead of building the Dark Tower, I were to take that code and try to turn it into another physical game? I'm going to deconstruct to reconstruct the Dark Tower as a physical game using what I know best, cards, dice, and boards. Once I've done that, I can go back way to the beginning, which is my original idea, which is the game that I was designing that I realized in the back of my head was really inspired by Dark Tower. So what I want to do is I want to fully analyze Dark Tower so I can go back and apply what I've learned to either make things better or unmake things worse in the game that I was building. I'm not knocking off Dark Tower. I'm standing on the shoulder of giants because that's what design is. Design is looking at something and saying, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something better. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. Again, I want to thank everybody who's put out digital versions of Dark Tower since the 1980s to say, hey, we're going to keep this game going. Again, the physical stuff is great. I actually have the little comment card that came with it. Dark Tower warranty registration. Isn't that awesome? Seriously, my Dark Tower is completely complete, except a couple of the flags are broken. Look at this manual. It is huge. And one of the things we're going to do in this video is we're going to really learn to play Dark Tower without the manual. 
I love a good manual. I love a manual that is complete, but not everybody who writes a manual writes a manual in the best way of teaching how the game is played. And one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to play the game and learn the game and teach the game so you can jump in and play it without having to go through this mind-numbing exercise. Matter of fact, one of the things that I was thinking about when I was designing the game that started all of this was could I design a game that had no instructions? Could I design a game that's instructions were the process of the game so that anybody could sit down and start the moment you start reading the instructions is the moment you start playing the game. And that's really what inspired me here. And I got to go back all the way through this. So now my challenge is, can I teach you to play Dark Tower while we play Dark Tower? Tabletop Simulator version is where we're going to head next so we can talk about it. And then we're going to go through and look at some of the numbers. These numbers, by the way, are not 100% exact. They're based on what other people have researched and said, these are what the numbers they think they are. And that's basically what I'm going to go with. I am not going to sit here and play over and over and over again to try to figure out based on Monte Carlo demonstrations of what the actual percentages are. I'm going to trust the people who programmed this before have made pretty damn close versions of the game. And again, I thank them for that. So let's head over to the tabletop simulator and my computer. What a difference a few minutes makes from downstairs in my game room to upstairs into my office. Wow, I am not going to tabletop simulator just yet. Instead, I'm going to do an overview of Dark Tower. Now, I'm not going to give you the, you know, click here, click here thing the manual does. The manual is very specific on how to operate the game, not just how to play the game. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about how the game is played so that you can understand and really embrace the story as well as the interactions that happen inside of the Dark Tower. There we are. The challenge. Retrieve the ancient magic scepter that has been stolen by a tyrant king. The scepter is the power staff of the empire, and a kingdom has been offered for its return. It now lays hidden in the dark tower, guarded by tyrant's fierce brand of brigands. Three magic keys will open the tower to you. Find the keys in three foreign kingdoms on the game board, and you can lay siege to the dark tower. In search of the keys, leave the citadel in your home kingdom with 10 warriors, 30 bags of gold, and 25 rations of food. On your journey, you will fight battles, be attacked by dragons, lose warriors to play against starvation, and get hopelessly lost in uncharted territories. But don't despair. Visit the bazaars to buy warriors and other supplies. Stop at tombs and ruins to discover treasures of gold, dragon swords, magic keys, helpful wizards, and the flying horse Pegasus. The sanctuaries are open to you, too, ready to outfit you with warrior's golden food. Once you discover the three keys, begin your siege of the Dark Tower, start out by solving the ancient riddle of the keys, and then fight the brigands within. If you have a stout heart, quick wits, and undying courage, you will retrieve the scepter, save the empire, and win, win a kingdom. De dare to lay siege to the Dark Tower. The object of the game. The object of the game is to journey around the board, collect three magic keys, and successfully attack the Dark Tower. That's a great starting point, and I love the fact that there's a really good story. It goes through all the little details of what the story elements are, and then tells you exactly what it does to solve the, the puzzle, to win the game. And I really, really enjoy this. This is the only actual page of the manual I'm going to read, because it's the story. And if you're not willing to embrace the story, why are you playing the game? That's really important, is that's part of the, the game we're going to play. So here's a picture of what the game board actually looks like. This is the one I just showed you a minute ago. And what you're going to see is this is the Citadel right here. This is the Citadel that I start out with. And, of course, everyone starts out on their own Citadel. And then, of course, I have the little buildings here. Keys, Pegasus, the Dragon, my scorecard, and, of course, everybody else's area as well. Now, the basic setup is as follows. You're either going to choose to play a solo player game or a multiplayer game. In a solo player, solo player game, if you die, it's game over. So at any time during this game, if you're fighting and you run out of warriors, that's it. It's game over. In a multiplayer game, if you die, you get down to one warrior, and then you got to scramble to get more warriors because really it's a race to the finish, not just the only one to, to win wins. The entire game, by the way, is about you defeating these brigands. There's going to be lots of little battles, and that's really what happens is, is you're going to battle your way around the board, and so you battle the Dark Tower. 
but before you begin you decide what version of the game you're playing and the idea is is they're telling you right off the bat there's level one level two and level three in level one there's 17 to 32 brigands in level two there's 33 to 64 brigands and level three there's 17 to 64 brigands so the idea being is there's an easy there's a hard and there's a whoa bigger version of it there's also a special training level which i don't even care to discuss because that's their way of trying to give you a sample version of play but we don't need to do that because we're going to tell our story and remember our story is is that we need to battle our way around the board and defeat the dark tower while collecting keys and other magical items now let's talk about our inventory there are three main items that we have at all times we have our warriors our warriors are used to fight since this is a fighting game we need warriors they also are going to be carrying our gold with us so each warrior can hold six gold bags this is very very important because if you lose warriors you'll lose gold you can either buy warriors in the bazaar or you can get them at the sanctuary and citadel later on if you really really need warriors gold gold is used to go shopping we want gold it's the only reason we need gold is to go shopping we can either win gold as treasure from our battles or we can also get it if we're running low at a sanctuary or citadel and then lastly we have food this is probably the one of the more complicated items in the game because you're going to try not to pay attention to it. But the idea is that every 15 warriors you have eat one food per turn. Now, this can actually scale up pretty good because you can have up to 99 warriors. You don't want 99 warriors because if you do, that means you're going to be going through seven food per turn. Now, that's a lot. And basically what this does is it penalizes you for being too equipped. And that's a good thing, by the way. It causes the game to be balanced because if you get too greedy with the warriors, you better get greedy with the food. And you can get food by buying at the bazaar or also from the sanctuary. You start out, by the way, with 10 warriors, 30 gold, and 25 food. And if you think about what I just said, that means right now you can go 25 turns without running out of food. You can have a maximum of 99 each, but of course, that's crazy in this game. And if you have more than 99, it'll, it'll drop you to 99. So again, warriors, gold, and food. There are other items that you can get. In the bazaar, you can buy a beast, which can carry 50 gold, which is great, because if you lose a bunch of warriors, you can still have a bunch of gold that the beast can carry. You never lose the beast if you get it. If you, have, if you buy a scout, that can prevent you from getting lost, and you can never lose that. And if you have a healer, that prevents you from getting the plague. All three of these items are items that you can buy, and you only get one of them. And once you buy them, they're yours for the rest of the game. The idea is you're going to spend good money on them, and do you want to raise the money to spend the money for their advantages? Now, there are things that you can only win. The dragon sword can defend you from the dragon. You can only use it once, then you got to give it back in case you win it again. Pegasus will allow you to fly almost anywhere, but then again, you've got to give it back, and of course, unless you win it again. The wizard only works in multiplayer mode. It allows you to curse somebody. And then, of course, you need the keys, the brass, the silver, and the gold key, which are going to allow you to move around the board. You can't leave a region until you get the right key, and there you go. So these are all the things that you can collect along the way. So again, while we have our Warrior's Golden Food, we have our optional Beast, Scout, and Healer, and then, of course, our Magic Items, which are going to make our lives a little bit easier. We have to get the keys, though. The keys are required, or we can't play the game. Now, we can move anywhere we want, and what's really nice about this game is, is there's no dice. The idea is you just choose to move one space, and the board is very intricate. If you actually are an idiot, you'll actually do the wrong spacing. You really have to look and go, wait a second, oh, I shouldn't have gone that direction, because there really isn't a uniform spacing, so you can be really clever about how you look at the board. You start out at the Citadel, and you move your way counterclockwise around the board, and of course everyone starts at their Citadel. By the way, you can't go to anybody else's Citadel. They can't go to yours. And the only time you can hit your Citadel, by the way, is when you start and when you make it all the way back around. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Of course, there's other spaces you can go to. You can go to the Tomb or the Ruin, and you can do exploring there. You can go to the Bazaar and go shopping. You can go to the Sanctuary to get replenished. And, of course, you can go to the Frontier, which is your step to the next region. And, of course, you have to have the proper key for that. And then, finally, when you get to the very end, you'll go to the Dark Tower spot, and from there, you must have all three keys. 
One thing I want to point out is when it comes to moving, you can also use Pegasus. And you can jump to any spot in your current region, but if you have a key that would allow you to go to the next region, you can actually jump there as well. Since you actually don't need a key for the first region, if I had a Pegasus, I could go all the way over there if I wanted to. So it's the first big jump, but you can't jump where you need a key without a key. So it's really easy to just move wherever you want to go. And then, of course, on the Dark Tower, you press the button, but that's not what's important right now. The idea is, is you're working your way around the board. Now, working your way around the board is only one part of it. You need, of course, build up your army, and you need to gather those keys, and more importantly, you need to survive. Now, what happens when you move to a blank space? Lots of blank space on the board. Well, first, nothing can happen. Next. Or... A battle can happen. And we'll get back to battles because there's a lot of battling in this game. Or you could find a dragon. Now, if you encounter the dragon, it's going to steal a quarter of your gold and a quarter of your warriors. Now, this is cool because the dragon will rem remember all the stuff it's stolen. So if you're in a multiplayer game and the dragon keeps stealing from everybody, if you have the dragon sword and the dragon attacks you, then you get everything the dragon is carrying. So that's a real windfall. Of course, you then lose the sword. And you can try to win it again later. In a multiplayer game, you can also move the dragon to any other empty spot, like a blank space, not a building. Any other spot on the board, which you can use to block other people as well. So the dragon can be quite strategic, and that um, that sword oh, could be worth a lot if you can find it. Again, you can't buy the sword. You have to win the sword. Lost. If you move and it says you're lost, you immediately lose your turn and you go back to the last spot you were at. Waste of time. However, if you have a scout, not only do you get to stay on the space that you were going to, but you get to move again. So that scout is a really good investment if you're afraid of getting lost. And then plague, if you, if you get the plague, then you lose two warriors. But if you have a healer, then you gain two warriors. Again, something really worth investing in. So again, there are five things that can happen when you move on a blank space. Nothing, battle, dragon, lost, or plague. And again, the dragon only combated with uh, you can only fight it with a with the sword that you win but the uh, loss and the plague you can decide yourself if you want to spend if you want to earn and spend your money by by going to the bazaar and buying the right countermeasure so what if you go to a tomb or a ruin by the way it's the same button on the on the machine either nothing happens easy you instantly get treasure which is the best by the way you open up the door and they go here's some treasure I love that or it's a battle. Again, another battle. So moving nowhere can cause a battle. Moving to a tomb or ruin can cause a battle. A battle. Let's talk about battles. Whether it's the immediate battle uh, of a tomb or a ruin, or by moving, or even the end battle, which of course would be the Dark Tower itself, the battles are all the same. So here's what ends up happening. Your warriors face the brigands over several rounds. Now, we already told you how many are the final rounds. You already determined that when you set your level. But in this case, the brigands are going to be a little bit more than what you've got. It's going to be close to the amount of brigands to the same amount of warriors that you have. It's never going to be less. If you win a round, the brigands are cut in half. So if you've got 10 and they've got 10 and you win, you've got 10, they've got 5. If you win again, you've got 10, they've got 2, 2 to 1, 1 to 0, and you win. If you lose a round, you lose one. So they go from 10 to 5, you go from 10 to 9, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, 7 to 7. If you think you're going to lose, you can run away. Press the run away button, run away! Obviously you can't win anything, but you've run away. Uh, if you win, by the way, you can win gold and treasure, which is what you need, because remember, you need treasure. Because one of the treasures is the key that will allow you to keep moving around the board. In a multiplayer game... If you lose, you always are left with one warrior. So you don't have to worry about that. The worst thing that happens is you go down to one warrior, you make your way over to Sanctuary to get some, some stuff, or you go and get some gold and see what you can do. In solo play, if you lose, if you go down to zero, it's game over. So you want to keep your finger ready to, to run away if you think you need to. Now, if you're in a multiplayer game, one of the prizes is a wizard that can curse. And the way this works is you have to use it right away. So you've won the battle, and they go, Wizard! Now it's going to ask you who you want to curse. And then secretly, you privately pick another player to curse. And like the dragon, you get a quarter of their gold, and you get a quarter of their warriors. And when their turn comes up, when they go to move, 
uh, it's going to say, no, no, I don't think so. You don't get to do anything. You lost your Golden Warriors, your turn's over. So it's kind of a double whammy. You get to steal their turn, and you get to steal their Golden Warriors. Obviously, only happens in a multiplayer game because you can't curse yourself. And this one is the only one that has to happen right away. All the other ones happen as needed. It's kind of a neat superpower. Sanctuary. So if you go to Sanctuary and you have four or fewer warriors, you get more warriors. If you have seven or fewer gold, they give you more gold. If you have five or fewer food, they give you more food. So the Sanctuary will give you what you need. If you have 10 warriors but you need golden food, it's just going to give you golden food and leave your warriors the same. That's what Sanctuary does. But if you'll notice, you're working counterclockwise around the board. Sanctuary is deepest into the territory. So it's kind of really a, a trek to get to Sanctuary in each region that you're going to. The Bazaar. Oh, the Bazaar. People love going to the Bazaar. When you're at the Bazaar, you can only purchase one item on a turn. So if you're going to buy warriors... You can buy warriors, but then if you need food, you got to go back to the bazaar again. And remember, you can stay on the spot as long as you want, so you can keep doing that. But remember, every turn that passes, that's food you're eating, and then you're waiting for other people to, to run around against you. So what there's going to happen is, is first it's going to offer you the warriors. And it's say, warriors cost 10 gold. And if you don't like that, you can press the haggle button. And if they you got a 50-50 chance, it's going to go, okay, 9 gold. Or he's going to say, no, bizarre closed, and that's the end of your turn. You can keep pressing your luck. You can keep haggling if you want. So if you said, if you get it down to, let's say, five, and you want to buy, you can buy, you got 50, you can buy 10 warriors, bam, you've got 10 warriors. Once you've bought it, you can't buy anything else. you got to go to the bazaar again on your next turn. Food is always one, by the way. Food is always one gold. You don't have to worry about that. You can also buy the beast, the scout, and the healer. Remember, you can never lose them, but you only can buy one of them. And so that's, that's what you can do as well. So those are the five things you can buy at the bazaar. And haggling, that's a useful thing to do, but you can really risk your turn, and your turn is valuable to you. The frontier. The frontier is when you move from region to region. You can move from the first frontier to the second frontier without a key. That's not a problem. In the second frontier, you need to get to the second frontier, you need the brass key, then the silver key, then the gold key, which takes you home. And if you try to go across frontiers without the right key, it's going to tell you that there's a key missing. But basically, you got to wander around and you got to fight battles or open tombs until you get the key. It'll never give you the wrong key and it'll never give you more than one key. The idea is you got to wait until you get that key. The Citadel. So you started at the Citadel and you can only go to your own Citadel. And at the very, very end, after you've returned to your region with all three keys... If you have between 5 and 25 warriors and you go to the Citadel, it will double your warriors. So a lot of people will actually even go to the Bazaar to buy more warriors to get to 25, so it doubles to 50. Otherwise, the Citadel acts just like a sanctuary, and it will give you extra. If you're really running low, it'll give you the extra that you're needed. You can't go to a Citadel twice unless you visited a ruin, a tomb, a Bazaar, or the Dark Tower, and then come back. The idea is you have to do something special. You can't just keep sitting on the Citadel trying to, to do things. The Dark Tower. The end game. The boss level. It's kind of strange, though, that you know exactly, or at least the big range of how many uh, brigands are going to be on the boss level. But before you do that, you have to unlock the Dark Tower by putting the keys in the proper order. So what's going to say to you, is the brass key first? And you're going to say yes or no. And if you get it right, they're going to go, is the gold key next? And you're going to say yes or no. And if you get them in the right order, then you get to fight the Dark Tower. But if you're wrong, then you've lost your turn and you get to try again your next turn until you figure out the order that the keys are in. There aren't that many orders it can be in. By the way, it's not going to change in you in the, in the game either. Once you, you've figured out what that is, it's going to be the same for the rest of the game. Then you're going to fight the battle, which either you're going to win or you're going to retreat because you're like, oh, I'm losing this thing. And if you retreat, you've got to go and, you know, re-equip re again until you can fight your way in. And then if you win, it's victory and you win the scepter and you save the kingdom and you're great. And there is a score. There is a score, by the way. And the score is calculated by the fewest moves around the board and the fewest warriors to attack the tower. So the faster you get there and the leaner your uh, fighting, you know, force is the better your score is going to be. Most people are really aren't interested in that right now. But if you're playing a solo game, then you probably are going to be trying to play against the score. If you're playing with a group of people, you're probably just trying to play to win. Important items: you got to keep track of food. 
There's going to be a warning sound if there's less than five food, because if you're out of food, then at every turn, warriors will, warriors will start to die. And if you're playing a solo game, remember, if you, if you get down to zero, you're dead. And I have actually starved to death and lost without even battling anybody, trying to get to where I can buy some food. Also, your maximum amount of gold is warriors times six, plus 50 if you own a beast. So if your warriors die, you lose gold. Food is so important in this game. All right, before we get to tabletop, I want to talk about one other thing. And that is, I mentioned in the earlier part of the video that I trust in everybody. Oh, don't worry about it. I trust their numbers and all that type of stuff. Well, you know what I decided to do? I said to myself, I'm going to double check these things. So I actually went and I grabbed my dark tower and I grabbed the pen and paper and I started calculating the numbers. I literally started going through and just not, not everything. I'm not insane. I just thought maybe I would see just how much this would work. So I went through and I'm not even kidding here, by the way. I literally went through and I just kept hitting move, move move. And I did it three times a hundred times just to see what the probabilities would look like. And I don't know if it's because I was playing single player or multiplayer. I don't know the nuances of this. I don't think this little box is as nuanced as, as everyone might think it is. I don't think it realizes that, you know, it's going to start ramping up based on regions. But I will tell you is this, is that the numbers weren't even. The numbers weren't the same that I looked at. And I don't want to spend hours. Each, each hundred moves, and this is just moving, just hitting move, move, move. Each hundred moves took 20 minutes. So to do 300 moves, that means I spent an hour just playing with the Dark Tower, taking notes. And that is barely anything. So I want to thank uh, Gazox de Hagen and Michael Bomber for their notes and their usefulness here doing this. Um, Gazox de Hagen uh, is the one who built it in Tabletop Simulator. So thank you so much. And he's even put his code out for people to see. Michael Bomber also had written it and his code's out is available as well. And I want to sort of transition to the ads. If you're just playing the game, you don't need to know this. But I'm also a game designer and I want to talk about the game design for a second because it's really, really important. But I also want to say that from a Marley Car Monte Carlo perspective, trying to go through and calculate every single bit of the odds just by seeing how the machine works is so tediously slow. And I'm so glad I tried it, even though uh, I said I wasn't going to. I'm glad I did because I don't know if it's right or not. And it's okay. It's very okay because you know what? This isn't, this isn't the Bible. This isn't a gospel. This is just a, a, a game that somebody made. And again, as long as the experience that we design is valid and close, that's good enough. You know, I mean, how much did these guys, you know, play test and, you know, do it? We don't know. And I'm sure, by the way, that in a modern age, that all the years later, that the playtesting that we've been doing, the speed of the playtesting that we've been doing on the computer allows us to actually get much more reliable data than they would have done back in the day. So there you go. The other reason I want to go over the odds real fast is because I am thinking about what it would be like to turn this into a physical game. I'll mention some of it right now. Afterwards, we'll do more of it later on. So right now, when you move to a blank space, you've got five different things, Dragon Lost, Plague, Battle, or Nothing. And basically, we're looking at uh, 1 in 10 for Dragon, 1 in 10 for Lost, 1 in 10 for Plague, 2 in 10 for Battle, and 5 in 10 for Nothing. My numbers say those are off, but I'm assuming that these are a, a satisfying mix. Because I will tell you that my numbers were that I was getting Lost, Plagued, and Dragoned a lot more often, and I didn't like it. So I'd actually rather would have seen this lower in my own experience. I think this is a better number. Hey, look, a 1 in 10 chance I can make a D10 for a moving. That would be a moving to a blank space. That'd be pretty cool. Now, if you're landing on a tomb or ruin, you've got a 2 in 10 chance that it's empty, 1 in 10 chance of treasure, 7 in 10 chance of battle. Hey, look, that's another D10. So I could have a D10 if I want to move to a blank space. I could have a D10 if I'm going to Tomb or Ruin. All right, that works pretty well. Treasure. Now, there's a 1 in 20 chance you get nothing. Well, that's a D20. That's a really fun, though. That's a really good D20 in it. Then, of course, we've got our specialty items. For gold, by the way, you're going to win between 10 and 20 gold. 
Well, that's pretty much not quite a D10, but it's D10-ish. I could be 11 to 20 and then say, you know, the 10's automatic. So I probably could use another D10 for the gold. And for our specialty items, oh, look, you've got a 3 in 10 chance of getting a key if you need it, a 2 in 10 chance of getting the sword, 1 in 10 chance of getting Pegasus, 1 in 10 chance of getting a wizard, and 3 in 10 chance of getting nothing else. I didn't even test those, by the way. I have no idea where those numbers are from. God bless whoever came up with these numbers. But look, another D10! So many fun things can be done with D10s. All right, with Sanctuary, this actually is a little bit different. With Sanctuary, it tells you what the, the range here is. So the bonus amount of Warriors is 5 to 8. Well, really, if you're looking at 5 to 8, you could that's really a range of 4. So you could use this as a D8, where it's uh, 2 5s, 2 6s, 2 7s, 2 8s. That would work as well. Uh, with the gold, you've got uh, 10 to 16. Now, that's a 7, so I'd probably go 11 to 16, and I would just probably use a custom D6 with this. So, again, you could do these with D custom D6s, uh, custom D8s. You've got to be thinking about how these variabilities work. Now, again, you could always do it with cards. You can always make lots of decks of cards, but I love custom dice. I think dice can be really, really fun. I can make D6s easier than, obviously, I can make a D8. Uh, it looks something like... Um, yeah, but we're not going to do that right now. Now, the Bazaar, it's a 50-50 chance. And in the uh, manual, it says near 50-50 chance. And so they, they've actually changed it to like 48-52 in tabletop. But 50-50 is good enough for me. And the offerings, by the way, these are they, these have been figured out empirically that the, the numbers are 4 to 10 for Warriors. And it's nice to know that you'll never get less than 4. If you have 4 and you had Haggle, you're closed. The food you can't haggle, the beast is between 15 and 25, the sky is between 15 and 25, and the healer is between 15 and 25. Oh, look, another D10, or near enough to D10. So again, a lot of things you can do here with cards or dice. The last one is the battle. Now, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how these battle numbers worked at first. I looked up a bunch of different people's equations on, on this, and what we do know is as follows. It almost always comes up that there's more brigands than you or near than enough more brigands than you. So we know that the equation is going to be the number of brigands is warriors plus some random number that starts at zero and ends at, let's say, five. That's a pretty good number. We also know that if it's uh, the brigands are about the same as you, the odds are 50-50. We also know that if you start to win you slaughter. And if you start to lose, you get slaughtered. So there's this weird little sliding scale. And this is the the one that came out of the tabletop simulator one, which we're going to be using with. And this one's going to tell you basically the equation they use for calculating the odds, again, when you're outnumbering or when you're outnumbered. I will not be turning this into dice cards or boards anytime soon that's gonna be a whole nother video but right now just to say is the the most complicated por portion of turning this of of uncomputerizing this i got all these d6s d10s and d8s or a bunch of cards but this one is a sliding scale and i've got some ideas on this but i don't want to go over it just yet so um Let's play. Let's get off to the tabletop simulator. And now let's actually see, now that we know how the game is played, we know why the game is played. Remember, you're a hero with warriors eating food and carrying gold. And you're marching around the board, fighting things, collecting things, and using your toys to your advantage so you can get to the, the door, and get those keys in the right order, knock it down, and win. That's the story. Now that we understand the story, and hopefully you can remember that story. Now that we understand that story, let's go see how that story is played out inside of Tabletop Simulator. Obviously, I'm going to play solo because you don't see anyone around here, right? So I'm going to play solo, which means i got to be careful because if you die in the Tabletop Simulator, when you're playing solo, you're dead. All right, let's do it. Ah, yes, the Tabletop Simulator. I will create a single-player room. Workshop, Dark Tower, load. Wait for everything to load, and it is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Can I say again just how beautiful this is? I own this game, and it's so nice to see just how lovely they've set this all up. Now, uh, you'll see it's done by color, so I get to decide I'm going to play red. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say I'm going to play red. 
And now all of a sudden you can see. Now, interestingly enough, what they've done here is very interesting. If I click over here, 10 warriors, 30 gold, 25 food, everything's laid out for me. So the good news is I don't got to remember. I don't got to move the pegs. Kind of, I'll never hit the inventory button. How's that? So here, here I am, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the dark tower itself. Here's the dark tower. Here's the keyboard command for the dark. Here's the keyboard for the dark tower. And this, of course, is the little little thing up there. So level one, yes. Now I don't need to say it's going to read who goes first because I'm there by myself. I'm going to hit yes. You gotta love the sound. It's such a great sound and music in here. Now, the first thing I get to do is I get to move. So I'm going to move. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? So my goal is I need to run as fast as I can over this way. So I'm going to try to get there as quickly as I can. So I'm going to move here. And then I press the move button. I'm already battling. Great. All right. 14 of them, 10 of me. 9 of me. Oh, I'm losing. 14 of them, 9 of me. I'm losing. 7 of them. All right, I'm winning. All right, that's good. Nine of them, nine of me, three of them, that's right. All right, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this. So I lost one warrior. Not bad, not bad. And 46 gold. That's my total, by the way. At the end of your turn, by the way, you always hit end. And that's going to be nice because then you would turn the, the Dark Tower to the next person and they would do their turn. So again, you're going to see, you tell it which of these you're stepping on along the way. So let me come over here and I'm going to move here and move. Battling again. Again, watch carefully. Nine of them. Nine of me. Four of them. All right, I'm going to win. Eight of me. Four of them I lost. That's bad. Eight of, okay, eight of me. Two of them I'm winning. Eight of me. One of them. All right, I won. What did I win? 48 gold. Now, this is important. I can't have more than 48 gold because 8 times 6 is 48. So it's going to be very important that I, I be, I'm not going to... I have to get more, more warriors if I want to get more gold. All right, come over here and move. Oops, end first. Move. Nothing. Yay, nothing happened. That's great. Now, I'm going to move to the frontier, and I'm going to hit the frontier button. Oops, end. That's my turn. Nothing bad ever happens when you're on the frontier. All right, let's come over here. Now, because I'm going to move over here, what I want to do is I want to rotate so I can see it. And then hit end. Always remember you got to hit end at the end of your turn. I can come anywhere I want. I'm going to go this way because I'm going to go to the bazaar. Plague. I lost two. So it's going to tell me that I only have six. And now I'm going to have... Um, if I come over here, you're going to find out that I only have 36 gold. So I'm going to come over here to the bazaar. All right. So what do they got? Warriors are four apiece. I have 36 gold. Four is as low as it possibly can go. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say I want yes. I want one warrior, two warrior, three warrior, four warrior. Five. That's 20. All right, that's 20. I'm going to go the uh, I'm going to go one, I'm going to go one more. I think I can do it. All right. Then I hit end. And it tells me I have four gold left. I could have gotten one more, but it's fine. Anyway, so I hit end. Now, if I wanted to go back in, I could just my turn, I could say I want to go back to the bazaar, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep working my way across the board. Lost. I went move back one. All right, I'm going to do it again. Nothing happened. Now I'm going to go to the ruin. Door open slowly. Battle. All right, it's all right. I got some, I got, they got, ooh. 13 to me, 16 of them. I'm losing. 13 to me, 
Eight of them. I'm winning. Thirteen of me. Four of them. It's always halves. Uh-oh, I lost one. Oh, that's good. All right. And the bigger the disparity, the more likely I'm going to win. Ah, oh. ah! Oh, I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. That sucks. Seriously, I didn't get anything. So I'm going to stay there again. I'm going to go right back into their tomb. Thirteen of them. Eleven of me. Ooh, I don't like that. Thirteen of them. Ten of me. Thirteen of them. Ten of me. Six of them. Seriously, I'm going to retreat so quickly if I think I'm going to die. All right. Oh, man. Okay, I won. All right, what are you going to give me? 21 gold. Oh, come on. Hmm. I guess I'll just... I guess I'll just move here. Nothing happened. Now, if I try to go to the frontier... It says, key missing. I'm not allowed to go there yet. I don't have the right key. So, let's come over here to the ruin again. Oops. Another battle. Ten of them. Nine of me. Five of them. Nine of me. Two of them. Nine of me, one of them. Thirty-eight gold. And Pegasus. Now it's great that I have Pegasus. <coughs> but um <coughs> I need I need uh I need something. So let's come back over here. What what do I have right now? Nine warriors, 12 food, and 38 gold. You know what? Let's head back to the market. I just lost two. Seven warriors. So, how much do I have again? I have 38 gold. All right, so let's go to the bazaar. Ooh, it's expensive. No, I don't want that. No, I don't want that. Um, do I want the beast for 23 to carry more gold? No. Do I want the scout for 22 so I don't get lost? Hmm. Or do I haggle? Let's haggle. 21. Do I dare it down? One more time. Yes, 20. I'm going to buy it. So I, now I own the scout. So let's go to move. Oops. 10 brigands. Six of me. Uh oh. 10 brigands. Six of me. Five brigands. Six of me. Two brigands. Six of me. One brigand. Uh oh. All right, I won. What are you going to give me? 30 gold? Oh, come on, I need a key. So I can't go anywhere until I get the key. All right, we're fighting. Who are we fighting today? Nine of them. Four of me. Not good. Nine of them. 
three of me. Nine of them. All right, I'm getting out of here. Getting out of here. No, no, no. All right, so I retreated, but I did not die. So now we are going to head this way. Because now we only have two, so I'm going to come over here. There we go. That's right. I'm going to move there. Dragon! I have one warrior. Oh, my God. Five gold. All right, this is this is really dangerous. If I don't get over here in time, which I will, by the way. Sanctuary. And now I'm gonna, it's going to give me some stuff. Eight warriors. All right. Eighteen gold. All right. Um, so back, back towards the ruin. <laughs> Here we go, battling again. Eight of them, eight of me. I think that's a bug, by the way. I don't think it was supposed to retreat that quickly. I think I thought I retreated, but I'll take it. Let's go to the ruin. That's telling me I'm running low on food. In five, I will start starving to death. Empty. All right, so let's go back to the sanctuary to get some food. Because I'm running out of food. All right, that's good. So I go to the sanctuary. Fourteen food. Yay. All right, so I'm not starving to death. Let's move this way. I don't know why. Nothing happened. Let's move this way. Nothing happened. Let's move this way. I'm going to fight again. Ten of them. Six of me. Uh-oh. That's not good. Six of me. Five of them. Six of me. Two of them. Six of me. One of them. Six of me. None of them. All right. So let's see what happens next. So I got some gold. And finally I have the key. So now that I have the key, I can decide to go to the frontier. So, no. And then I say, Frontier. And then I can come over here, and I can rotate. I can come over here, and I can rotate the tower accordingly. Good. So now I'm, this, I'm over here. So where am I going to go next? So, I am going to start moving my way in. All right, move. goes. Lost. But I have a scout. So you know what that means? I don't even lose a turn. I get to move again. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say Tomb Ruin. I'm fighting. I'm going to fight. Seven of them. Five of me. Not good. Seven of them. Four of me. Seven of them. Four of me. Three of them. Four of me. One of them. Three of me. One of them. Three of me. None of them. All right, so I won, but I'm not overly happy. Nothing great just happened there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come over here. Press yes to confirm your use of Pegasus. Yes. So what that means is, is I can jump anywhere I want on the board, and I'm going to jump to Sanctuary. So. That's a good use of it. So I don't have to risk walking all the way there. Now I have ten warriors. 
All right. That's what you that's that's kind of the thing you'd use it for. for. All right. And let's head to the tomb. Open the door. Give me a key. 11 of them. 9 of me. Damn it. 11 of them. 9 of me. 5 of them. 9 of them. 2 of them. Okay. I accept this. Ooh. Come on. Oh. It's devastating. What I get? 36 gold? A silver key. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I have to make some decisions real fast. Come back over here. Six warriors, 36 gold, six food. Mmm. Mmm. So I'm going to go this way. Sorry, this space right here. Stop it. There. Move. <gasps> They're going to try to fight me. Eleven of them. Five of me. Eleven of them. Four of me. Eleven of them. All right, I'm going to escape. I'm okay with that. And that turn. And I'm going to come over here to the sanctuary. Nine warriors. Fourteen food. All right. Let's move this way. Good. And I can go to the frontier. Which is good. Move this way. Good. So now I'm on the third of the four, the fourth of the four regions, right? One, wait, one, two, three, four. I'm on the fourth region. So I move into here. All right, good. You always forget to hit the end of your move. It drives me crazy. I do that all the time. Let's move to the tomb. Let's go right to it. Gold. I'll take gold and let's move here. See, this is a good example. I went this way. I could have gone this way. See, if I had to pay attention to the board, I would have saved myself some grief. There comes another battle. Twelve of them. Nine of me. Six of them. Eight of me. Uh oh. Six of them. Eight of me. Three of them. All right. Let's keep doing this. Seven of me. Uh oh. All right. I can handle this. No. Stress is so crazy with this game. 36 gold. And the sword. Excellent. I'm at the bazaar. Mm, 36 gold. All right. Um, so I'm going to haggle. I'm going to do it. Oh, closed. Do it again. Ten? No way. I pressed haggle twice, which changes it to the colors of your, of your seat colors, which is a really cool feature they put in there, but I forgot to mention earlier. All right, do it again. And now I'm, I'm wasting food, by the way, which is killing me. Five. Yeah, that's good. That's good. How much, how much gold do I have? Thirty-six? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Excellent. Now, uh, if I come over here and I press Haggle, I turn it back to the regular colors. All right, so let's move this way. Good. Now let's move this way. Running out of food. Dragon, but I have the sword. I have the sword. <laughs> Give me my stuff back. 13 warriors. Two gold. Apparently they didn't have any gold. All right, now let's head to the sanctuary. Running out of food, but I made it to the sanctuary in time. 12 gold. 14 food. Thank you very much. Let's move this way. Here comes the battle. 14 of them. 12 of me. 14 of them. Uh-oh. 11 to me. 14 of them. <laughs> 11 to me. 7 of them. 11 of the, me. 3 of them. Alright. Uh oh. Alright. Uh -huh. You're killing me! Alright, I think I got it. Alright, I got it. Give me some gold. Give me a key. Pegasus. Oh, uh, okay. So... Let's see if I get this key. Alright. What do we got? Thirteen of them. Eight of me. Thirteen of them. Seven of me. Thirteen of them. Seven of me. Six of them. Seven of me. Three of them. Six of me. Three of them. Six of me. One of them. Six of me. None of them. All right, give me some gold. Give me a key. Go 36 gold. Golden key. All right, so now I am I'm good to go if I want to. Um, so I'm going to come over here to the... Good. I'm going to come over here to the frontier. Now I'm heading home. And I am going to use my Pegasus. Sorry, end my turn. I'll use my Pegasus. Yes, I want to use my Pegasus. And now I can jump wherever I want to. And I'm going to jump to, what do I have? Six warriors, 36 gold, and 10 food. Um... So I'm going to jump to the Citadel. Now I've got 12 warriors. That's great. Now remember, I can't go back there. I can't until I make it somewhere else first. So I need to head to... I'm lost, but I have a scout. So I'm not lost. So I get to go again. Oh, I'm going to fight now. 13 of them. 12 of me. 6 of them. 12 of me. 3 of them. 12 of me. 1 of them. 11 of me. One of them, so sad. Eleven of me, none of them. Give me some gold. I need some gold. Fifty-two gold. I can take that. And I'm going to come and I'm going to go to the bazaar. Now I have fifty-two gold. Nine for a warrior. Ah. Lose a turn. 
Back to the bazaar. Six. Oh, I shouldn't have done it. One more time. Nine, eight, seven, six. I'll take six. I'll take six. I got 52. So that means um, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Four gold left. All right, good. So now how many, I got 19 warriors. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna move. I'm running out of food, that's okay. Plague, I'm gonna have 17 warriors. I didn't buy a healer. And I'm gonna go to the Citadel. Which should give me food, should also double my warriors. 34 warriors. 18 gold. Enough food to get me there. I'm going. All right, let's see if I can do this now. Move this way. One. Good. Now I'm going to come over here. Two. Good. Now I'm going to come over here. Three. Good. Now, Dark Tower time. You ready for this? It's the end game. Running out of food. So now it's going to ask me, is the brass key first? And I'm going to say no. Is the silver key first? I'm going to say yes. I was wrong. The silver key is not first. So I'm going to go back to the Dark Tower. The brass key first. Yes, it is not first. But I know what it is now. Back to the Dark Tower. So, is the brass key first? No. Is the silver key first? No. Is the gold key first? Yes. Is the brass key second? Yes. No. Damn it. All right, now I'm going to start dying because I don't have enough food. No. No. Gold is first. Brass is not second. Silver is second. All right. 28 to 33. 28 to... 33, 14, 33, 29, 1. Baby's holding on. 29. 29. 29. Victory. 34. I scored 34 points. That's great. So there it is. I have beaten Dark Tower. So beginning to end, this is really what I wanted to go through and talk about sort of the how Dark Tower is played, how the tabletop simulator version compares to the real version, how the algorithms work a little bit, how the feel works a little bit. It's kind of neat. I, I still have a couple things that I want to do, and it's going to look at sort of how I would have turned... I mean, I could turn all of this into dice, except for the sliding scale thing, and that's a whole other analysis thing that I'm going to do at a later date. But this is the end of my Dark Tower video. I'm really, really happy. My name is Jared Bendis, and I hope you've enjoyed this. 
And I hope you go and play your own Dark Tower, and I hope you design your own games. And I really want to thank everybody whose shoulders I stood on in this video. There's some really great programmers who worked on these things back from the 1980s all the way up through now. And I hope my uh, little take on it was very useful for you all. So thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe and follow, because I do a lot of cool that kind of stuff. And please, by all means, play some Dark Tower. It's an awesome game. best part about the tabletop simulator is this. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Catharsis.